On my previous CNC machine, I had four feet of extra travel for the gantry. So it was actually a four by 12 foot machine. And that extra four feet gave me an area to do a vertical table that was adjustable from 90 degrees to zero degrees from the tabletop. So I could work on the ends and the sides of objects. And the plan has always been to do that same adjustable vertical table on this new CNC router parts machine. So what I need to do first is to add the extra four feet onto this machine. So CNC router parts sent me the extension kit, which adds an extra four feet of movement to the gantry. The first thing to do is to open everything and each part seems to be in a different kind of packaging. <laughs> the linear rails are packed really well in a tube. And I've finally figured out how to get the wood plug out of the end of the tube. And it's actually the, the linear rails and the rack gear that goes on the side. And then I can take apart the bracing for the frame and the new cable tray and cable housing. Then most of the 8020 came in one big package. So the first thing to do is to set the legs up, which is mostly putting the feet on the legs. So there's a little metal plate that goes on the bottom of the leg piece. And the foot can then thread into that metal plate. And this makes the, the foot adjustable. Then there's a cross member between the two legs. That goes on pretty easily. So these are the two new legs for the extension. And I can add the bracing at this point while the end is still open. And I can slide the, the nuts into the track. So the stops have to come off of the existing frame, but they're just screwed in place. Then the, the new extension will be spliced into the existing 8020. So there's some pieces that fit into the slots on both of those and hold the two pieces together. So I can slide the new side piece onto the legs. Then these side pieces fit into those splines into the existing frame. Now I put one cross member in and it's a little further away from the table than the table is up from the floor so that my hinging table will fit within the cross pieces. And I left out one of the cross pieces that would normally go in the hole that I'm making in the table. So now that the frame is in place, I can move the linear rail. And what I need to do is move my eight foot section of existing linear rail over the seam that I just made so that the linear rail doesn't break at the seam in the frame so that they overlap. So I need to loosen up the bolts on the linear rail, then slide it down over the new part of the frame. Now supposedly you don't have to hold the gantry up while you're doing this, but I thought it'd be a good idea to put some blocking under it and take some of the weight off of the linear rail which still didn't move very easily. I had to sort of tap it along and it worked and everything seems to be okay. <laughs> so with the linear rails, there's an end that's machined flat and there's an end that's got a little bit of a chamfer around the end. And the machined end is the end that you use if you're going to add a second piece of linear rail so that the place where there's a seam in the linear rail is two flat machined ends instead of having any little bit of a chamfer on that edge. Now I knew this when I was putting together the original machine and I thought I had my eight foot section in the right direction, but I didn't realize that you were supposed to slide that eight foot section over the new seam. So I actually have the existing section in backwards. And when I realized this, I thought it was going to be a huge headache because I thought I was going to have to take apart the gantry to get it off of 
that rail so that I could pull the rail off completely and rotate it around. But what I figured out is I could put the new four foot section of rail in and move the gantry onto that. Then the original eight foot sections would be clear of the gantry and I could just pull those off and turn them around and put them back on again. And that worked. Now when you're attaching the linear rail, there's blocks that help hold it at the same height in relation to the table all the way along their length. And it helps make that seam nice and flush. Now the next thing to go on is the rack gear and this is what allows the gantry to move back and forth. And this was fairly straightforward. It was just another four foot section. Now they don't just butt up against each other. There needs to be a little bit of a space so that the tooth spacing is right between two different pieces of rack gear. So if you have an extra piece of gear, you can use that to line the teeth up. Or this extension kit comes with a little segment of gear that you can use to mesh the teeth up. So on the final piece that I had to put in where I didn't have an extra piece, this helped out and I was able to get the, the teeth to be perfect. Then the stops can go back on again at the end of the new extension. Then the next thing to go in is the new cable tray. Since the machine is longer, there needs to be a little bit more length for the cables to move. So I needed to put in one more section of tray and they're pretty easy. It's just a bracket that hangs under the frame, which holds up the section of tray. And the tray just gets a one bolt at each bracket. Then I can put in a new piece of the cable holder the cable chain or whatever this stuff is called. <laughs> I thought I was going to have to add cable, but it turned out I had a whole bunch of extra sitting on the floor. So I just had to move the existing cable holder down and add the new piece of cable holder. And this was all straightforward. It was a little bit difficult getting the new and old piece to go together. I think it's the kind of thing, if I did this all the time, I would know how to do it and it'd be easy. Since I'm sort of trying to figure it out as I'm doing it, it took a little while. Then it was sort of the same problem at the end. There's a, there's a special piece that goes in the end that allows you to bolt the cable holder down to the track so it doesn't slide around. But once that's bolted in, the machine's ready to go. My dust collection pipe just makes it down towards the end. I had planned for this extra bit of length in the bed, but it may take a little bit of tweaking. And the next thing to do will be to build the vertical table. Thanks for watching.